Well, it wasn't the way I would have done it. It was actually a lot better. It was perfect. Wait a minute. Hold on here. There we go. Cause I don't have enough. I don't have enough people here to clap. Just I've just I'm alone with the clap today. But how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I said it wasn't the way I would have done it, and I said it was better. And here's why. I think I told you on a phone last week or whenever. We obviously everybody was pretty certain he was going to be there. The question was, he's going to be there, but how and to do what, right? And I said, I wonder how this is going to be. This surprise is going to be sprung. It's going to be revealed or unveiled or what, what manner is he going to make the debut? And I'm thinking to myself, self, what I would have done was since they know what the surprise is, surprise them in the way they get the surprise, make it a some build to some moment. And then the, and they couldn't hear the fucking music after that anyway, but but I realized two things. Number one, Punk knows his hometown better and realized that how long he's been gone, they didn't need to do anything else. And secondly, also, to be honest, I would have been running a normal television program up until now. Whereas, but I then, in retrospect and reflection, <clears throat> they've had so many surprises and shocks and some that weren't shocks and some that weren't surprises and some that were flat and some that got over whatever the fuck that it's that wouldn't have been unusual that would have been business as usual this is the first time that they've actually just had a big star show up come out get an ovation do his promo be not be attacked not be fucking mixed with a uh, miscellaneous other people etc you know what i'm saying so in this case, the simplest thing that they could have done was the perfect thing. Play that music and let him come out in front of his hometown. And the babies went in the air. I haven't seen that. As a matter of fact, these people are better baby throwers than when Cena came out what, a few weeks ago. And we said, oh, my God, these the, the babies stuck in the rafters. They never came down. And it, it, it the a guy was crying, you know, and I'm sure there is, were multiple people crying, actually. Well, yeah, but, but yeah. you know, I mean, on camera even, you know, the, but people were crying. Punk milked it. He he's he's obviously thrilled to be there. You can tell it's emotional. He dives into the crowd and they actually didn't part and let him fucking drop on his face. They caught him. He ran out of fucking song. He it took him so long to get to the ring because people wouldn't stop loving on him. Um, not that you could hear it anyway. After the, they were waiting, the I, we now know that Chicago can name that tune in one note. Because the and then you couldn't hear it after that, except when they were singing it at the top of their lungs, when they weren't fucking chanting CM Punk. I've never seen a show have to go to break. <laughs> before the guy gets in the ring because the people won't stop screaming. Did Hogan ever get... And I mean, let's face it. There have been huge pops in history, but this was a perfect storm. A, a hometown, a crowd like that, we know the AEW faithful are very motivated, and a major star that they not only haven't seen in seven years, but they weren't sure they were ever going to get to see again. I don't know that something like this has ever been done in wrestling it, with all of those those pieces in place at the same time. But they come back from the break, they're still fucking going crazy, and the opening line, I thought, was perfect. You know, it's almost like a Sally Field at the Oscars. You love me, you really love me. Hey, you make, you make a, a kid feel like Britt Baker in Pittsburgh. But that... <laughs> Remember when I said that when Cena came out, the people went batshit and he put on a promo clinic? He did put on a promo clinic, but he was still doing a promo. He's just the best at it. But this was because of all of the happenings and all of the events and because Punk has the verbal ability to convey this and he followed the Jerry Jarrett 
motif to the letter that did Jerry, I've always said Jerry Jarrett told me, you don't just start out by working people. You tell them the truth as long as you can about things that they know to be true so that they, they're with you and they, they believe you're telling the truth because you are. And then when you branch off, if you don't take too far of a right turn or a left turn, they're with you for the whole thing when you throw a little bit of the business into it. And he was, the people were emotional and he was emotional because how could you not be emotional with getting that kind of fucking ovation? And also he's obviously motivated. He wouldn't be doing this if he wouldn't to come back and do what he likes to do for a, a obscene amount of money, I'm sure. And so this wasn't as much of a promo as much as this star that they love coming out and having a personal, personal conversation with each and every one of them, which Eliza John was entertaining and John's very well spoken and John's a great performer, but that wasn't that. I don't know that he would have been having that conversation with each and every one of those people at, 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 unless it was SummerSlam and he's promoting a show. But Punk wanted to say a few of those things. So the point is, I've said this so many years. This is a classic example of it. The more genuine something can be in the wrestling business, the less you have to gimmick it. And and I was glad. And and again, except for, well, it just so happened that old Darby Allen and Sting were up there in the rafters watching. Okay, and and we'll go with the moment. But they didn't gimmick it up. Nobody interfered. Nobody interrupted. He didn't. You know. Uh, on a, the 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 sit, I mean, the whole way that he did this thing was perfect, including the the sit cross legged in the ring, the sharp comments about the place that got him sick in the first place, and he took his time because he had him eating out of his hand. I mean, when they pop for you sitting down in the ring, they're with you, right? It was conversational and emotional. And as, as I said, genuine. It, at one point, it was like he was running for office. This could have been a campaign speech. I don't know who the mayor of Chicago is currently, but they might have competition. And that it, it, is this the simplest segment that AEW has ever done on their television program, and it obviously was the best television they've ever done. What do you think? You hit on the exact thing I thought about as soon as I watched it. I'll just say right at the top, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was great. I loved it. It couldn't have gone any better. It's exactly how anyone could have hoped it would have gone. I thought of that old Bruce Lee quote, simplicity is the key to the brilliance. It was exactly what it needed to be. I said it on Twitter. They had to start that show with that. It had to start like that. It started exactly how it should have. The people went crazy. And I went into it watching the last segment on SmackDown, which was a face-to-face -face promo with Reigns and Cena. And that was really good. And of course, those are two of the true stars of WWE. I went from that into the CM Punk thing, and it was amazing. Because here's another guy at that level, if not beyond that level with this audience right now, and it was just such major star power. And the other thing is, we talked about it with the Cena and Reigns face-to-face, -face, I think last week, maybe two weeks ago, I forget what it was. And we've talked about it with some of the recent AEW matches that have gone a long time. The matches that go a long time to us feel like they've gone a long time and through commercial breaks and will they ever end. The segments with the guys that truly have the presence and the charisma. aura and the charisma and the star power whether it's Cena and Reigns or Punk, those segments can go a half hour and it goes by in five seconds. That CM Punk segment was so good, I didn't want it to end. I actually thought when he sat down, oh, this is great. Just go the whole hour with him sitting in the ring. It'll be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> but it was perfect. And AEW deserves major kudos for this. CM Punk deserves major kudos for this because he obviously has a major say in everything he's doing. This couldn't have been done better. And this, I think, was the single greatest thing in AEW history, the single best moment in AEW history. And one last comment, All Out sold out, or All In, I guess, sold out years ago, the original one. Like you always say, crowdfunding, people want to support the underdog, people got behind the Bucks and Omega and Cody, and it sold out. 
CM Punk sold out a building on the rumor he was going to be. <laughs> and if that didn't tell you, and I know it's his hometown, if that segment didn't show you, beyond Jericho even, beyond Cody, certainly Omega and the Bucks, I think even beyond Daniel Bryan, Punk's a level of star they don't have there. And what a brilliant debut. 10 out of 10. Whatever you want me to say. Five stars, seven stars. What's the limit now? Seven and a half stars. Oh, well, wait segment. a minute. Wait a minute. Now, is, is there a new rule? It, it, it can only get eight stars if it's in the United Center? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Tokyo that's Dome's got some competition. That's right. Uh, you said something a minute ago. You said, uh, you know, you watched Reigns and Cena, and then you went to the punk promo, and he's on their level, maybe even beyond. There's nobody right now on CM Punk's level in the wrestling business. And here's why. Because, again, how can I miss you if you won't go away? The only, when you get a guy that's really over and you take him away from people and they don't know when or if they're going to get to see him again, it, it, not, I mean, I'm not trying to downplay this because first the guy has to be really over. It has to be a major star. But remember, even when, you know, when, when Daniel Bryan, for example, has been on television fairly often over the last, wh however long it's been since he got cleared to come back. And the people were batshit crazy to see him when he first came back because he had been gone and you didn't know whether you're going to see him again because of health reasons, right? Edge, same thing. And he was majorly over when he came back because, you know, there's a return to triumph story. But with Punk, he was attractive to that audience anyway. He was over with that audience anyway. And they, I think, with more than anybody else, like I said, we've seen, we've been seeing Brian Danielson. Now, you know, with more than anybody else, people were convinced that maybe Punk was just not coming back because it was coming to time where he either was or wasn't. And also, I, he left, Edge left on top because of the injury. I don't know if Edge at the time was more over than Punk was when he left. I think Punk pretty much went out on top. Um, you know, it, it like I said, any of these other guys, when when you take a big star and you deprive people of them, and then you allow them to you know to have that again, that's great, and it adds to it that Punk's really over, and it adds to it his verbal ability. It adds to it that he feels genuine to people. Yes. I'm, I'm talking about outside of the room. You see him on Twitter. You hear him comment on things. He tells you what he thinks. I find I agree with him almost every single time. He's one of the few people in wrestling <laughs> I think actually gets it outside of the ring and inside of the ring. But, you know, Bob Backlund, Brian Solomon, remember he recently researched yes. Bob Backlund was away almost the exact same amount of time. And that entire time Bob Backlund was away, other than the smart fans watching him in UWF, the fans said, wow, whatever happened to Bob Backlund? It was never, I want Bob Backlund back. Bob well, Backlund has to come back. He never would have got that kind of pop. CM Punk is a very unique But now, come on, let's song. not even try to make that comparison. He was the world champion in the company, and he left right after, what, six months later? Well, and with all respect to Bob, I've never had a crossword with Bob. I love Bob. And Bob, Mr. Backlund as a heel, was much over with the much more over with the WWF audience in the 90s than Bob Backlund, the All-American boy. Well, he almost left as champion by popular demand of the fans, remember? <laughs> it was right. a goddamn, it was a grudge deal uh, that Vince Sr., you know, uh, was going to get him over no matter what and keep him there because people had said that it would never work. So he made it work. But Vince Jr. changed that that particular equation probably for the better. That's one of the things he did to improve things is move away from that direction. But anyway. You know, and I'll say this too. And I put this on Twitter and some people got upset with it and a lot of people agreed with it. Unfortunately, the next segment was a tag team match that wasn't the kind of thing I liked, but I said, and then it turns back into AEW. Well, let's not and go there. There's I, a little I, bit more. What I was going to say, what I was going to say is, all right. I actually have, for the first time in a long time, faith in a wrestler doing good things and doing the right things. We'll see what happens. It's happened before where I, my heart gets broken, but I think CM Punk has shown over his career 
a level of quality control that others may not have. And that segment was so good. I have a little bit of faith that this may be a great thing for AEW, for us enjoying AEW. Oh, it's definitely going to make more palatable whatever he's involved in. Uh, I will say that. And, and going back to the interview, and I, th- I mean, we beat the, the horse to death on this, but the point is it was a perfect storm, but Punk had to be over to begin with. He left on top. He's got a unique connection with the audience. Uh, they know he's genuine because a lot of that was completely genuine. And then he branched off into working by challenging Darby Allen. A lot of people are going to say, well, what the fuck? I'm not opposed to this because, I, I mean, if he puts Darby Allen over in his first match, then we're going to have a different conversation. But if he can just basically go up a certain amount of opponents and make them look better than they have and elevate them, as we used to say, and at the same time go to a clearly defined match that's going to... Because obviously CM Punk versus Darby Allin is not the biggest money match that they can put together for a pay-per-view. But since they said this is a long-term deal, then imagine this. They're probably going to let him get a few wins first. Uh, He's not going to get the FTR treatment. Um, but anyway, the, what, the challenge, go ahead. What did you think? There was a little comment he made in the promo and it could be read or heard different ways. And I don't have it in front of me. I'm just paraphrasing. It was something along the lines of along this journey. Some of you gonna, are going to be disappointed with my personal decisions. No, it, it, no, the way I remember it and we can reference this, but I, I, I heard him say, some of you have been upset have been with some of my personal decisions. Okay, I only watched it one time, and I know yeah. other people have watched it multiple I thought it was will be, as in, hey, maybe down the road I'll hit one of the guys you like. Maybe down the road I'll do this or that. You know, I, I didn't know how to read that. I thought well, it was no, I, I still hold out hope that after the, the bloom is off the rose and familiarity breeds a little contempt, we could see a heel. But no, I, the way I heard it <clears throat> was that he said, I want to say that some of you along, along the line, or however that phrase turned, may have been upset with some of the personal choices that I've made. Okay, okay. I heard it and, again. Whether, I only watched it, it was, once. Whether it was, I get, was he apologizing maybe for an ill-fated UFC detour, or was he saying, well, some of you may be mad that I left wrestling or that I've, you know, left the WWE, whatever, but I took it, I took it in the past tense. And I wouldn't even say ill-fated UFC thing. You know what? This guy went out there, gambled on himself, gave it a shot. It didn't go perfectly, but he gave it a fucking shot. Give well, my- that's what I said at the time. I said, okay, you know, he fucking did it. In the, You know, and here's the thing. If Brock Lesnar had gone back and just fucking done job after job, that would have killed him in the wrestling business. CM Punk's whole appeal as a wrestler was not built on being a, a tough shooter. It was built on being genuine. It was built on, well, it was built on being a, a personality, and his personality is built on being him. Um, so it wasn't like Brock Lesnar going together, because a lot of people have said, well, he's showing everybody the business was phony. Well, that horse left the barn a long time ago. Even I'll admit that. But the fact that a pro wrestler did fight in the UFC, which that's rare air for even professional fighters. You know, that's not bad since that wasn't his gimmick. It would have killed Brock dead at four o'clock because that's his whole aura. And as we and and Brock is not the wordsmith to bring, you know, people back around, even if Heyman is, that he's got to have an indestructible beast. That was not Punk's yeah. whole vibe. But um And I just want to say too, I regularly, as people hear, I kill AEW when I think they do bad stuff, which happens a lot. It's not that I'm a hater, as the kids may say. It's that I like good stuff. <laughs> I also got to put over when they do it right. As my mother used to say, I'd rather eat good food than bad food any day. That's a ghost of Mr. Chicken line, but go ahead. Once again, I just want to say this could not have been done better. And Tony Khan, I think, did this better than Vince McMahon would have. And this was just perfection. And this was quite a moment. Where do you think this ranks among? And they let it breathe. They, too. That's it. They didn't rush it. The commentators didn't say anything. They stayed out of it. That was perfect. Can you imagine if you had to listen to Excalibur and Mark Henry and those guys talk during this? Oh, good. well, J- JR was, I guarantee you, JR had his hands spread out in front of all of them. That's his fucking signal layout, right? 
but I thought this was just perfection. And um, where do you rank this amongst modern wrestling moments? I mean, it's okay. it's such a well, unique let, moment. Let me get to the to the one thing that I thought I was going to have to knock, and then that that turned around. The only thing after the challenge and everything, September fifth, it all out. And he said it's a long term deal. I'm going to have plenty of time to talk to you, and blah blah blah. The line I'm back. And I was just, I thought, you know, that just seemed like a, he bobbled on the dismount. No, and then he, then he came back and said, oh, and by the way, on the way out, free ice cream bars. Oh, fuck, that's perfect. It's an Andy Kaufman fucking deal. Instead of milk and cookies, he gave him ice cream bars, which is the fucking callback, as the kids say, to the promo he did where he wanted ice cream bars back and, and, no purple M&Ms or whatever the, all the conditions he set out were in the WWF. And then that was, and as soon as they hear that, yay, and then the music again, and then they're screaming, like Mussolini! And just a cult of personality. Okay, okay. Oh, boy. Yeah, Please Sam, don't just, start they're, singing. They were it's screaming so at the top of their lungs. It was fucking wonderful. The line, I'm back, I took it, because, again, I said this the other day to you, so much of this, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing. This is a, probably a good way to utilize something like this. To me, it looks like so much of this is based around the way the ESPN did the Michael Jordan Last Dance documentary in Chicago in the same, yeah. you know, the same place. And when he said, I'm back, when Michael Jordan returned from retirement before that last run, that was his quote. I'm yeah, well, and I'm not even saying yeah. that the the but I'm just saying after that promo that he gave, it just it didn't seem like there was a, a go home line emphasis on it. It didn't. I'm not saying the material was. It just didn't. It didn't pop to me because that wasn't the actual last thing he was going to say. I didn't know he had a oh and one more thing. He came back and the ice cream bar. There you go. So he didn't. It, it's not the material, just the inflection or the way it would be delivered. I thought. Uh, and then, oh, oh, okay, here we go. Now we've left them all the way up again. So where do you rank this, or how do you see this amongst all the great wrestling <sighs> moments that we've actually seen amongst everything else in the last 10 years, 15 years? Oh, God. I thought you were talking ever, because I was going to have to struggle back to think. In the last... <laughs> since the, since the turn much. of the century, since 2000, since 2001. Oh, my God, I forgot I've been a part of two centuries now. Um. How'd you like the Ring of Honor things? Then I left Ring of Honor and I left pro wrestling and now I'm back to pro wrestling. What'd you think yes. of that? Yes. I, well, I, I wish that AEW, the rest of the product was more of a, a, a banner carrier for pro wrestling, but I, you know, yes, I, I like that also because, again, he's bringing those people in back into his roots and what he truly loved about this that he did. And and he's bringing them into it. He's you know he's back in the mindset. He's bringing them in. I like that. I wish that you know more of AEW stood up to that description. But maybe we'll work on it now. Maybe they'll have a good influence uh, at this point. But but where do I rank it? I mean, what? Goddamn, hardly. What was that? That interview that Brian Danielson did. Um. God, how long ago was that now? Was that almost 10 years ago? It's been a while. Hogan Rock, that moment, that match is one of those moments that the crowd reaction and everything was just perfect. Uh, what else? I mean, the other big AEW moments, I guess, would be Moxley debuting. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, all things, despite well, what you think or I think, in terms of AEW moments. No, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm scoffing at that. No, that did not compare in any way to the... No, it didn't. to the level of this, and Not I would scoff close. about someone else that you know didn't compare to the level of this. Um, and I mean, as far as matches and moments are different things, but at the same time, I don't know of a lot of matches that have gone gotten over with people and made this much difference and important. And this is a turning point type of thing. If if, if they, they capitalize can, on it, if it, this is starting to get to a world-class wrestling level of this is getting so hot now, they just just don't fuck it up. Just don't fuck it up. It just do, the Hippocratic Oath, first, do no harm. Just don't fuck this up, and, and you're, you're running along well. And, of course, we know where that 
went in Dallas a few years later, but at this point, just don't fuck this up. Do you think this is the best moment in Punk's career? Of course, he had the pipe bomb promo, winning the title, kissing goodbye to Vince McMahon. Maybe also the locker room discussion where he said, I don't have to work with you. You have to work with me. Well, yeah, do you I think this ranks amongst, is this the best moment of CM Punk's career by far? It's the best one we're going to see in public uh, because the, you know, those, <laughs> those backroom meetings, however many there may have been, probably would have been great if we could stream them live or whatever, but uh, I, we'll never see those. So in public, yeah, th- it, it, it has to be because that is, this is proof he did something that nobody else has done. He was able to sell out an NBA building on the rumor of just his appearance there. He's he stayed away, and that's that's what I was going to say earlier. Even the guys that come back, Cena comes back, but he comes back from the movies and he comes back from TV shows. I've seen more of John Cena over the last five years, accidentally, than when I was watching in the wrestling business, and he was on wrestling because he's on everything. Um, The Rock, obviously, people go batshit insane. You know, if he were to come back, and and hopefully he'll do that WrestleMania with Reigns. And that'll be a big thing, but he's everywhere. Punk has done a few of these, you know, TV shows and films and et cetera, but he hasn't been just, he's a, he's a quiet man, a very quiet man. Like that George Carlin line, who are you going to watch? The quiet guy in the bar sitting there calmly drinking his beer, or the guy that walks in the front door swinging a chainsaw over his head screaming, I'll kill every motherfucker in the place. But Punk likes to be private, and and so there's been some mystery, and there's he's built anticipation and longing. So I, it's just as long as they don't gum him up, and I and I have a feeling that he will. I I mean I don't know that I will agree with everybody that he wants to have a dream match with, but I don't think that he'll be out there with fucking you know, minions with face shields spraying cold spray on his fucking opponent's shoulder or whatever in the middle of the match, or he's an adult. That's what, you know, attempting to do the fucking floor exercise at the goddamn, you know, Romanian Olympics. So I, you know, they, they just have to not fuck this up. And I have faith in CM Punk. Like I said earlier, yeah. he, he has shown quality control. So I have faith in him, but all we could say is this, I mean, you agree with me, right? This couldn't have been any better. No, I don't see how. Um, I mean, maybe if, if he'd had somebody come and hand everybody the ice cream bar so they didn't have to walk to get it, that's the only way it could have been. That's the only way it could have been better because I saw the ice cream bar when they were eating it. Taz went to work on that thing right away <laughs> when they were eating it. And it looked like, sadly, that it wasn't. I was hoping AEW mimicked the original WWF ice cream bars from the late 80s which were the greatest ice cream bars ever, but it appeared to be just a ice cream bar wrapped in a chocolate casing, but I'll, nice I'll see. I've, you know, I never ate a WWF ice cream bar in my life. They were the greatest fucking ice cream bars. I grew up on a beach, so all day you're on the beach and you get hungry, you get thirsty, and all the kids would go over by the entrance, there would be the, the ice cream man, or we called him the Isis man, because it was really less about ice cream, more about ices, Marino's Italian ices, and just great stuff. And they always had the WWF bars and girls, kids who didn't like wrestling. They were the biggest hit because they were delicious. But also each one came with a trading card. And if you got a Hulk Hogan on the ice cream bar, you also got a free ice cream. So if you got Honky Tonk Man, you were disappointed. But if you got Hulk Hogan before you ate him, you also got a free one. So you get two. And then you go back in the ocean and swim. I don't know if I'd want to put Honky in my mouth, but that's just me. 